Consider the same banking application from previous examples. We're supposed to open two different account types, one for saving and another for checking, also known as current. Let's compare and study how we can approach coding from a structured and object-oriented programming perspective. In structure programming, I will create two functions, one to withdraw and another to deposit, since the working of these functions remains same across the accounts. While using the objects-oriented approach, we will create two classes, each having an implementation of deposits and withdrawal functions. This is redundant extra work. Now there's a change in requirement specifications for something that is so common in software industry. You're supposed to add functionality privilege banking account with overdraft facility. For a background, overdraft is that you can withdraw an amount more than the available balance in your account. Using functional approach, I would have to modify my withdraw function, which is already tested, and perhaps code a method like this one, which will take care of new requirements. Using oops approach, I just need to write a new class with unique implementation of withdrawal functions. I never touch the tested piece of code. What if the requirement changes further, like to add credit card account with its own unique requirement of deposits? Using structural approach, you have to change the tested piece of deposit code as well. But using object-oriented approach, you will just create a new class with its own unique implementation of deposit methods. So even though structural programming seems like an easy approach initially, oops, wins in the long term. But one may argue that across all classes you have repeated pieces of code. To overcome this, you create a parent class, say a count, and implement the same function of deposit and withdraw and make child classes inherit account so that they will have access to withdraw and deposit functions in account class. The functions are not required individually. This is inheritance. But wait, there is a problem with the method of implementation for withdraw for privilege and deposit for credit card is different. To overcome this, you can override the method implementation in your base class such that when withdrawn method for the savings account is called, this method is executed. But when withdraw method for the privilege account is called, the custom method is executed. This is polymorphism.